who was supposed to fill in for me? <laughs> um, sadly, Owen Ross uh, has COVID, and so uh, we thought that it was probably wise for him not to come and preach this morning with COVID. And so last night, I did I handed off the rest of my responsibilities for the women's retreat I've been leading at Lake Texoma. And as soon as we were done with our services last night, I booked it back home. And so I am glad to be here with y'all and <laughs> we're glad to have service. At the same time, Amy White, our children's minister, is also um, home sick. So uh, we need to hold the vote in prayer. And I have to just say, I, and I've been promoting this women's retreat. I was sad to not see some of y'all there. It is a really good retreat. And so I think that on our prayer request, it would be wonderful if we could just lift up and hold in prayer all of the women who've been on that retreat this weekend because uh, there's some really good, uh, deep connections amongst one another and with God. And it was, it's just a really good success, and it's wrapping up right about now. Um, and so we are glad that they were able to do that, and I was very thankful that I have, have some good, strong people on my planning team that could fill in for me as well. So I, I want to start with a couple of different announcements as people are coming in and getting settled. We have begun the season of Lent, and uh, instead of doing a daily devotional, which I know sometimes by this point in the season of Lent, just a few days after Ash Wednesday, we're already tired of and not and kicking ourselves for not being perfect at, at following those devotionals. So we've made it easy, and this is something that I think would be really helpful um, for you to do. Out in our lobby area, you're going to see these trash bags with a little label on there. It says 40 days, 40 items. It's not too late. You can go backwards a couple of days and add some things to it. But the idea is that you, each day, open up a closet or your cabinet, um, your attic, and you look to see what you have in your possession that you no longer use, no longer need, but is really good for someone else to be able to use. And then put that item in this bag, say goodbye to it, let it go. Uh, maybe that could be the thing you give up for Lent. And then at the end of our Lenten season, when we have Easter, you, in theory, would have a bag full of 40 or so items, and you bring it here, and we will take it to the Genesis Women's Shelter. Um, they have a thrift store, and that is their primary revenue stream for supporting the residents there at Genesis Women's Shelter. And so that we can give those things to somebody else, it doesn't sit there and collect dust in your house anymore. It's, uh, you know, four sizes too small or four sizes too big. And I encourage you to do that if you haven't already adopted some kind of Lent devotional practice for the season. And on that note, our mission focus for the season of Lent is One Man's Treasure. You're going to see the cart in the lobby. And it's not necessarily just a catch-all for everything. They have specifically requested sneakers and work boots, tennis shoes, um, basically things that they can be gently used or new, but large sizes of shoes and wide would be incredibly helpful, but they are always low on shoes. And so that's what our focus is for the season when it comes to One Man's Treasure. That is now through Easter. And then also with our Lenten season, we've got a, a Bible study that we're doing on Wednesday evenings at 6 p.m. and Thursday mornings at 10 a.m. And it is called Remember. It is based on the book that Susan Rob has written, and it's about remembering the covenants. And it's also going to mirror our sermon series for the season of Lent. And then last but not least, I want to lift up that we have our Kids Glow Party um, that is happening this coming Friday evening for ages 5 and up that Amy is hosting. This isn't just for our kids. The whole point of me promoting it to you when you think, well, I don't really have a kid. I don't know why I would have to mark that on my calendar is for you to maybe either cut that out of the bulletin or pay attention to that and invite a neighbor or a friend or um, the kids that are down their street to come to that so that there's an opportunity for them to do something fun, especially on uh, in a chilly season and there's not a lot of outdoor play going on in the winter time. And this would be a really fun thing for them to be a part of. So it is a free thing. Dinner will be provided. And it would be helpful if we have a general idea about how many people do that are going to come. So just let Amy know. And on that note, if you're thinking, I really feel called and compelled to help on that uh, activity, then I'm sure that if you let her know, she will be happy to take you as a volunteer as well. I ask for you to center your hearts and your minds as we focus on what we are here to do, which is to worship our God, connect with God, connect with one another, as we begin with our bells.
body and spirit as we affirm our faith together. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power, and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen.
I don't look like Miss Amy, but I'm going to do my best. <laughs> okay, y'all come on up and sit
We enter our time of community prayer, and this is when we lift up and we pray for, pe- pray for people we know um, really could use that extra encouragement and support. Beyond just praying for them, though, it's helpful when you send them a text letting them know you're praying for them, or a call, or a leave, a drop a card in the mail, just something like that to physically let them know as well. And that helps to remind them that the church stands with them whatever they're going through. So in this week on this congregation, we pray for those who've been hospitalized. And um, this past week or so, that was Gary Delvecchio, and we continue to pray for Javier and Lydia Escalera. And we want to also lift up and pray for those who are about to head into surgeries um, in the next week. I believe Martha, is that for you this week or next week? Martha, do you, are you going into surgery? We need, we need to lift up and hold Martha in prayer for her. Um, we want to pray for the survivors and family and friends of those who were impacted by mass shootings in the past week. There was one, there were like two last Sunday. Um, we want to pray for those who are battling cancer and also those who are on the other end of their cancer treatments and still recovering and need in prayer. So we want to lift up Leanne Peterson, Warner Frankham, Courtney Hansen, Joe Vaughn, and Martha Penson. And each week we pray for a peaceful resolution in the wars that are going on in our world that may not feel like they impact us each and every day, but they are going on and we want to make sure that they don't fade from our memory. So we lift up and we pray for Ukraine, we pray for Russia, we pray for Israel, and we pray for um, Palestine as well. We want to pray for our president and our world leaders, but we especially lift up our community leaders. Um, they're heading into election season. We know that that requires a lot of them, and so we want to pray for them as they continue to serve in their leadership roles, but also um, work towards that, that end as well. Who else should we lift up in prayer by name this week? Oh, I, we want to continue to lift up Clark McCabe. Um, as his shot continues to begin working to alleviate pain for him. We want to continue to lift up um, Amy Gilbert Martinez and their baby girl, Grace. Who else? Come to mind. Okay. Holding all of that in our hearts and prayers, knowing that God hears the names that are quiet on our minds. Let's go to God in prayer. Holy and loving God, we give you thanks for this day. Thanks for this day where we can gather together in the warmth of your sanctuary, out of the cold, to worship you, but to also support one another. Although we do not know what troubles our friends, what troubles our enemies, We know the realities of this world. We are constantly bombarded by trials and temptations and stressful news and worrisome decisions. Who will help us? You, Lord, you come to our aid each and every time. And not only do you you teach us and counsel us and comfort us, but you guide us. And you do these things through the people that are closest to us in our lives. And we, may we be alert to your presence amongst our friends and strangers and neighbors, the ways that you show up and speak to us. Thank you, God, for the gift of your covenant and, and help us to accept your promises of love and faithfulness. We can take them for granted, God. And we forget them. You were a parent and a friend to Noah and his family. Jesus called his disciples friends. So from both ends of the scriptures, we see your promise and your faithfulness. Speak to us this morning, reminding us that generations later, later, that we too are your friends. Beyond the biblical stories, we are your people. Generation after generation, you make covenants with us. God, hear the petitions of our friends, our church family, our neighbors, and respond to them according to your love. And according to your will, heal them. Be with the women of this altogether whole retreat. Be with and heal Amy. Be with and heal Owen. Guide all of us in the ways we should go as your people. And we will rejoice in your unfailing love. 
Amen. Will our ushers come forward? We have any ushers who are coming forward. And as they do, I just uh, I want to reiterate that we have, uh, and we're in the middle of our stewardship campaign. And so for the last few weeks, I've been asking for you to think through and pray about what it is you want to make that commitment to with God. And that's between you and God. It is helpful, though, for our planning and budgeting purposes as a church to know what that commitment is going to be for 2024. And so perhaps for you, it is increasing your giving a percentage from what you've done in the past. Perhaps it's a matter of making it regular, um, and whether it's every week or every month or, or once a year. But in addition to giving financially, this is an opportunity to renew your covenant as a member, your vow as a member of this church and community, that you will lift up and faithfully participate in the ministries of this church with your prayers and your presence, not just your financial gifts, but your spiritual gifts and your service and your witness. And this is our opportunity to do that at the beginning of each year. And so I want you to um, note that we have these cards in our lobby, and if you have misplaced yours at home or cannot find one, I can be, I'd be happy to give you one. We also have it online through our mobile app. Where you can access and fill that out there or through our website. But my hope and prayer is that you will return these, that we'll have our whole church return these um, back next Sunday, the 25th. Hi, guys. Are you going to help usher? Wonderful. There's one. Let us pray. God, you are a God of abundance, and you give so much to us. You are un unwavering in your love for us in this world and this care. May we be your instruments out into the world, your hands and feet. And so we pray, God, for a blessing amongst these tithes and offerings. May we do your work. May we be willing and generous of spirit to go out into your world, to show people where you already are in their lives, to awaken them to your love and grace by the presence of this church, and then welcome them in the community. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.
reading today. This is from Genesis 9, 8 through 17. Then God said to Noah, and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you. And with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you, and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my, my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Thank you, Kathy. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have gathered us to begin this holy season together. And in this space, we turn our hearts toward you. And so we pray that as we sit under the instruction of your word, that you would draw us deeper into the mystery of your great love. And in that great love, may we return to you. We pray all of this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. There are two major events in the Christian tradition that are deemed important enough for us to carve out a little bit more time. Um, the birth of Jesus Christ, which we've talked about before in Advent, and then the death of Jesus Christ. Only we learned that death is not how ultimately things will end for us on earth. There's this complete restoration of life that will take place with the, the dawning light of the new day that we call Resurrection Sunday, or also Easter. When we refer to this season of preparing, um, the 40 days or so leading up to Easter, we refer to them as Lent. This duration helps us recall the intimacy of Jesus Christ's life, the time he spent in the wilderness with fasting and praying, and then we are invited to enter in this beginning of Ash Wednesday, which is this past Wednesday, in the same kind of season of entering the wilderness with our attention on our own repentance. Now, it's not all about sitting with our feelings of shame. That's not all that Lent is about, but rather it's a time to be more aware of how sin in our lives separates us from God. It's also not about whooping ourselves on the back and trying to be as self-deprecating as possible. That's not Lent. Lent is this intentional opportunity to return to God and a God who loves us and pursues us all of the time. And because when we return to God, Scripture tells us that God really runs to us as well, even more fervently. And so in this season, we set aside time each day to read Scripture a bit more, to pray a bit more than we ordinarily would, and as comfortable as it can be, confess more. And in that way, as we find ourselves drawing closer to God, uh, we too are really ready for that Resurrection Sunday that is for Jesus and for us. That word, Lent, we often forget what it means, and it refers both to um, spring season and lengthening light. Each morning, you notice the light's a little bit earlier, the days are growing again, and in time, uh, that light will coax the bees out of their hive, and, and tulips will begin to open, and New buds will peek out on tree branches. I'm already seeing a lot of that happening all around. And it's exciting times we come into spring. It's a season that can stimulate our senses. And I would argue there's probably no better time than to be out and, and sit and hike and walk and um, reflect 
in creation about what God has done and is continuing to do um, in this time of self-examination. And then on Sunday mornings, we come together as a faith community to contemplate the mystery of what Jesus did on the cross. What was the point of Jesus um, dying on the cross for all of us and his resurrection? And one of the ways that we do this is to look back at God's bigger story in the Hebrew scriptures, or the Old Testament, as we often refer to them. And we remember. We remember God's promises to all of God's creation, the plants, the uh, animals, the whole planet, humankind, all kinds of flesh. You hear that word flesh mentioned a lot in that scripture passage. And this is through the covenants that God makes with Noah and with Abraham and Moses and David. And these covenants are foundational to our recognition of the true nature and character of our love of God. Understanding and reflecting upon these covenants helps us appreciate what God did through Jesus to establish a new covenant that exists alongside those established ones. So it's not that God says those other ones are null and void and, and you can ignore those and I'm breaking those covenants. Um, instead, this one, this new covenant through Jesus Christ is the fulfillment and the pinnacle all, of all other covenants that are instituted by God out of love for God's creation. And they're all a little different from each other. That word covenant comes from a Hebrew word, berit which it means bond or fetter, and it brings to mind the binding or the bonding of relationship. That's what this word covenant is. And we might be tempted to think of um, covenant much like today's contracts that we have between people, and in the sense that a contract does provide protection or coverage, right? But somebody's having to meet halfway in that legal transaction. So a covenant was always considered much more than a legal contract. Um, it's more than just meeting halfway. Each covenant that God made with God's people looked a little differently. And so for the season of Lent, I want you to let that word covenant sit with you a little in your prayer time. What does it mean to be in a covenantal relationship with God? What does it mean for God to have a covenant with us after all of these different generations? One thing that should stand out to you as you have that word sit with you is that God is really great at honoring covenants, and we are not so great at doing our part with covenants. And the story of Adam and Eve sets the tone and it establishes this succession of broken relationships between God and, and humans. Uh, it continues through the story of the people of Israel. And really, what we figure out through all of Scripture, time and time again, is people pull away from God and come back, pull away from God and come back. In every instance of rebellion and faithlessness uh, committed by people, th their story is really our story. And in every one of those instances of faithlessness on the part of us, the God's people, God remains faithful. And this morning, then, I'm going to begin with God's covenant with Noah. You heard that part of scripture that Kathy um, read, and I, I want, but I want to take you a little bit back to our predicament. Now, this is a baby storybook Bible, and the front cover of this whole Bible is Noah and the ark, uh, so it seems like that's a really important thing. And you turn to this story, and this is the lesson that we really talk to our kids about, that God told Noah to build a big boat called an ark, and Noah used a hammer, so let's pretend a hammer, right? You tell the kids that all the animals marched inside, monkeys and bunnies and cows, and God shut the door, and it rained and rained, but Noah and all the animals were safe and dry. God took care of Noah. God takes care of you, too. The end. That's the story of Noah, as we usually like to, to tell it to our kids. Um, and it's, it's a really pretty story. I want to take us back to that, what, what even was the catalyst for that covenant. And I'm not going to read all of this, but I want to read some sections here. Because I think we forget. The Lord saw that the wickedness of humankind was great in the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of their hearts was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he laid humankind on earth, and it grieved him to his heart. God regretted making us. So the Lord said, I will blot out from the earth the human beings I have created. 
people together with animals and the creepy things and the birds are there, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the sight of the Lord. And so Noah is called by God to listen up to what he's supposed to do. And God said to Noah, I have determined to make an end of all flesh. For the earth is filled with the violence because of the flesh, the people. And now I'm going to destroy them along with the earth. He tells Noah to build this huge ark, and then he says, I want you and your, your family to go on there, and then you're going to bring these animals, seven pairs um, of animals that are on here, and he explains how that's all going to work, and and flood the earth, and everything that's outside of that ark will just perish. And so for 40 days and 40 nights, it rained and rained, and all of the flesh died that moved on the earth. Birds, domestic animals, wild animals, all swarming creatures that swarmed the earth, and all human beings, everything on dry land, and, and who had nostrils to breathe, died. He blotted out every living thing that's on the face of the ground. It was bad. This is, this is not really a story for kids. This is a horrible story, right? This is, this is the way that we, we teach it, is, is Noah's Ark. And I think that as adults, this is the version that we hold on to. Um, and so then we take for granted how profound a rainbow in the sky is, what it really means. And so that's what this opportunity is all about. This is the opportunity to really remember this story. It's a horrible, a horrible story. This is a story that's really not for children. It should be rated R, right? This is a bad summary of what was going on at that time. It's tragic that God regretted making it. <clears throat> then God makes this promise. Has the Lord forgotten? Does the Lord forget? And so God says, when I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow was seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature on the flesh, and the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the rainbow is in the clouds, I will see it, and I will remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. I don't know about you, but before I really sat with this passage this week, I kept thinking, I, I was really raised to believe that that rainbow is a sign to us so that we remember God's promise. I never really thought about it this way. This rainbow is a reminder to us of God's mercy. When we see a rainbow in the clouds, we remember the covenant between God and us, but God is saying, look, I need a reminder. I'm going to remember my covenant and promise to you that I'm never going to flood the earth again. I'm never going to do that. I didn't want it. I didn't, I didn't like how that felt. I didn't want to do that. I'm never going to do it again. And I found myself kind of asking then, um, why does God need a reminder for this? Right? One would think that not destroying the earth again would be something quite easy for God to remember. I'm never going to do that. Um, don't destroy the earth again. No reminder needed. Okay, <laughs> just don't do it. However, God chose to create a rainbow to remind God of God's covenant. What are some of the ways that we remind ourselves something important? We might put it on our calendar. We might set a, an alarm. We might ask Siri to remind us something. One of the things I have been having to doing is taking a pen and writing it on the palm of my hand. Even if it's completely faded by the end of the day and I see just a little bit of ink, I will remember exactly what that was, right? Put a string around the finger. Have any of you ever been to the Sistine Chapel? You've got God and Adam touching, right? Uh, Owen gave me this little tidbit, and I think it was funny too. This image, this next one. <laughs> it really should be painted with a little ribbon around the finger so that God would not forget what it was that God is doing, this covenant here. And instead, God uses a rainbow, something not just for God to see, but for all of us to see. Scripture is full of God's people asking God to remember. 
Psalm 74, 2, remember your congregation, remember Mount Zion. 1 Samuel 1, 11, Hannah calls on God, look on the misery of your servant and remember me, and not forget your servant. Nehemiah 5, 19, remember for my good, O oh my God, that all that I have done for this people. Jeremiah 14, 21, remember and do not break your covenant. Scripture is also full of God's people asking God not to remember. Psalm 25, 7, do not remember the sins of my youth. Psalm 79, 8, do not remember against us the iniquities of our ancestors. All of those past wrongs, can you just ignore all of those kind of things? Isaiah 64, 9, do not remember former iniquities. Finally, scripture is full of God saying, God will not remember. Responding to our prayers, our petitions, even if they're, they're not voiced about our inner longings. Jeremiah 31, 34, I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. <clears throat> Isaiah 43, 25, I, I am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. Ezekiel 18, none of the transgressions that have committed shall be remembered against them. Hebrews 10, 17, I will remember their sins and lawless deeds no more. Remember, remember, remember all these things are of what God is saying to us and what we ask of God and hear the good news that we have here this is good news we have this omnipresent omnipotent God who has a perfectly mercifully intentionally selective memory right God chooses what God wants to remember and chooses what not to remember and I tend to forget these things that I want to really remember, right? And I tend to remember the things I really would like to forget. Think about your own life, how often you're like, I, I, I gotta put that on my head. I've gotta forget that, that person said that thing or that I did that deed. And those are the things that keep you awake at two, three in the morning. But you can't remember what you had for that really great meal just yesterday, right? It's, it's a tricky thing, our brain. And I'm so grateful that we have a God who can choose what to remember and what not to remember and how much that actually benefits us. Throughout scripture, God chooses not to remember the sins of the repentant sender and God chooses to remember God's covenants. So God chooses to say, I'm not going to remember the sins of these rebellious people who turn away from me. I choose to remember my promise and my covenant, my mercy, the fact that they are my people, and I love them, and I never want to destroy them again. When Jesus was on the cross, two criminals on each side of him also being crucified along with him, in Luke 23, uh, one on the right asked Jesus, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, truly I tell you, you will be with me in paradise. Remember me. Did Jesus know he was a criminal? Of course. Did Jesus remember his sins that day? Not anymore. Chose not to remember those. Did Jesus remember him? He never forgets. So, does God remember and forget? Selectively, yes, absolutely. Does God remind, need reminders? We all have different ways to remember things. We have the calendar and the string on our finger, the list, and perhaps God does too. This is a photo taken by a photographer friend of mine that was of Dallas from Sylvan Bridge, Tramalcourt Park, um, on February 4th, a couple weeks ago. And it's just so gorgeous to see this rainbow. I took a couple of pictures around the same area, actually. Um, and it's nice to pause. And look at that rainbow, the bow in the sky. And as much as we have learned and we think that that is for us to remember, wouldn't it be great if we, we realized that's for us to remember that God 
wants to remember God's promise. We all have those things, and we just know, and we're hopeful, and trusting, and we're thankful that God's reminders work flawlessly for God. And however fallible and flawed we all are, Jesus followers are, we must continually seek our own reminders from prayer to Holy Communion to the daily devotionals that you might do to home study to congregational worship. We have to continue to seek those reminders for ourselves because our memories are very um, imperfect. They're not like God's. And we constantly remember the one who never forgets us. Thanks be to God. Amen. We use that word, remember, a lot. We use it even in our liturgy for our Holy Communion every week. Think about how often we say remember. And think about what that means for you. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him who seek to grow in his likeness. So let us draw near with faith and make our humble confession as we prepare to receive this sacrament. We confess with thee. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. And we have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love for us. So in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God. And so with your people on earth, and all the company of heaven, we praise your name, and we join our voices together with theirs in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering and death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, and you delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and you made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. On the night in which Christ gave himself up for us, he gathered with all of his friends for a final meal, and he took the bread, he blessed it, gave thanks for it to God, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take this and eat, this is my body that is broken for you, do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, he again gave God thanks, and he gave it to all of his disciples and said, take and drink. This is my blood, blood given for you, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink from this as often as you gather in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice and union with Christ offering for us as we all proclaim the mystery of faith. That Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine and make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all of the world until Christ comes in final victory and peace in his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And let us now join our voices together as we say the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. happens to be located in First United Methodist Church in Heath. Um, but you do not have to be Methodist to enjoy the sacrament, nor do you need to be a member of this church. This is an open table. We recognize and celebrate the presence of Christ in this holy space, and we know that Christ extends that invitation to all who come forward. Will our ushers please come forward at this time? When you come forward, you Take a piece of the bread and dip it in the juice to receive both elements at once. And at that time, you're welcome to kneel at our prayer rail or sit in your pew in an attitude of prayer and thanksgiving, whichever you're more called to do. We are grateful that we have this gift to share with one another, and it is open to all. So we even have the gluten-free and individual serving if you need that for your health purposes, and you'll just come to, um, I guess, Gemma's station. She'll have those.
gave this to me when I got ordained, this stole, because it was one that she had during her time before she retired as a clergy. Um, and it's just such a beautiful stole that reminds us of this rainbow that's put in the sky that is God's reminder to God's self. So as you look at those rainbows, especially as we head into spring, we have those weird showers here and there that peak up and then subside and the sun comes back out. Just take a moment to look at that rainbow and really appreciate how much God loves you. But that is a reminder for God. Commitment and covenant from God to us. And it's just one direction. It doesn't require anything else of us. Receive this benediction. God's love knows no bounds. God goes with us. And so may we remember the unforgettable God, the God who will never forget us, the God who will love us always. And may the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the communion of our Holy Spirit go with you now and forever. Amen. Thank you.